Hello everyone and welcome back to my Sandbox CDB series in Kerbal Space Program 1.0.4. This time we begin with the first launch of the recoverable Taurus B system in 1.0.4 to test whether it can handle the new aerodynamics of Kerbin. It is carrying two habitat modules for a lunar surface base, each module with room for 12 Kerbals in cramped conditions or three Kerbals in ideal long-term conditions. The Kerbals will be transferred to the base only if the modules land on the lunar surface successfully. No Kerbals are on board this launch. So here we go with the countdown. T-15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And ignition and liftoff. We have liftoff of the Taurus B delivering two habitat modules to the moon. We've cleared the launch clamps. You can see the enormous fairing necessary to carry these habitat modules. Uh, a little bit dicey. We'll see how that works out in the aerodynamics of Kerbin now. So far, liftoff looks good. The EDB has added extra struts to the payload to ensure that it doesn't wobble too much. In previous launches of the Taurus B, SAS had trouble uh, maintaining stability and had a lot of wobbling and had to be disengaged in order to make the ascent work out. But we see here that SAS seems to be handling the launch fairly smoothly here, uh, right on the prograde vector nominal trajectory so far. Uh, approaching the speed of sound here soon. We are probably approaching the region of max Q, maximum dynamic pressure, momentarily. Uh, there has clearly been a loss of vehicle. Um, no clear indication what has happened yet. The, the launcher seems to be intact and proceeding. Uh, uh, whatever failure occurred was clearly a payload failure of some kind. Uh, but there have been no indications prior to the disintegration of what might have been going on. Even with the continued operation of the launcher here, it's doubtful that the Taurus B will be cleared for further service until until the specific origin of the problem has been identified and that might be quite a while given how mysterious the explosion was but uh, here we see that it placed itself into interplanetary space into orbit around the sun and uh, reached escape velocities and we will expect that the payload will take some time to reform as well and the Taurus B will be grounded. After the grounding of the Taurus B the EDB was in a conundrum because it had a second payload ready for the Taurus B and now it had to find some way to launch it. This payload could not fit in the shuttle's payload bay and was too heavy for the shuttle and so we have this. The ELS is a shuttle derived launcher. You can see the shuttle's two boosters with the MAF engines on the side there. Those are recoverable and then the external tank in the center with its fairings removed and the bottom fairing replaced by a Rhino engine, the center engine from the Taurus B launcher and the top fairing replaced by a payload fairing for payloads up to 100 tons to low current orbit. And so that is our new launcher and it should be fairly reliable. And so here we go for the countdown. T minus five, four, three, two, one. Ignition and liftoff, a uh, very vigorous liftoff because this payload is nowhere near 100 tons and it is headed to the moon. Uh, this payload is in fact a new module for our lunar station, a uh, bean station of course, and it is primarily a liquid fuel tank to refuel the Orion 1 space liner. And so the Orion 1 will then be able to refuel that bean station and proceed on its way. Without the shuttle, the launch stack was exceptionally stable. And uh, here we are getting ready for booster separation and we'll see how that goes. Of course, the Mammoth engines on these boosters are the most expensive engines in the stack and the most expensive parts. And so they are the priority for recovery and we will see how that goes. The center portion with the Rhino is non-recoverable. Here we have separation. And separation is clean and it looks like the boosters did not collide with each other and so they will presumably be recoverable. They have their parachutes ready. Here we'll have payload fairing separation in a moment. 
And there we go as the Rhino engine continues to boost this up into space. There we see the payload. The Poodle engine is part of the transfer stage. The transfer stage actually doesn't have enough Delta V to get the payload all the way to the moon. It'll only go part way to the moon. And then the payload's own uh, thrusters will have to carry it the rest of the way for ant engines on the payload. Uh, the payload is just a big fuel tank, very simple, and two uh, senior docking ports, Clampatron senior docking ports, one at each end. Obviously, this fuel unit will be an integral part in the whole Orion Space Liner system, and our drilling units currently on the moon will be able to refill Bean Station, and that will be able to supply this module with the liquid fuel to refuel the Orion space plane. There we have engine cutout as the vehicle has reached the desired apoapsis. Lots of fuel remaining in the external tank, unfortunately. Of course, again, the capacity of this is 100 tons to orbit, and the payload is actually much less. Uh, here we'll have relight at apoapsis. There appears to be some wiggling there, but it seems like it's stable. After burning to orbit, Mission Control decided to actually uh, decrease the orbit, bring the periapsis back down so that the external tank and Rhino engine would re-enter safely and the payload will use its Poodle engine in order to boost to a full orbit. And so that's happening here, the external tank and, Poodle, and Rhino excuse me, will be disposed of in the atmosphere and the payload will continue to push itself to orbit, which means that there's even less fuel in the transfer stage than intended. After getting the payload to orbit, the Poodle engine relit to get the payload on its way to Lunar Transit. And that's what you see here, the Lunar Transit burn. Unfortunately, again, the Poodle did not have enough fuel to complete this burn and soon ran out about 200 meters per second short. And in retrospect, Mission Control decided that they really should have pumped fuel down into the Poodle stage and allowed it to finish this burn at least, if not also do the burns around the moon. But, uh, well, that, that was retrospect, and what we ended up having was a very, very, very long burn with the ant engines, and the unintended duration of the burn meant that the burn was not accurate, and therefore a correction burn would have to be done after this portion here, and that was very costly. So this was not the best sequence of missions for the EDB in its attempts to get assets around the moon and on the moon. First the complete loss of the payload on the Taurus B launcher, and now this uh, bringing less fuel than intended to beam station around the moon. So this was the correction burn, as you can see, quite hefty. Fortunately, no matter what burns this payload does, it will bring a surplus of liquid fuel to beam station it simply can't burn that liquid fuel on its own, it doesn't have the oxidizer. Uh, there you see the resulting orbit after the correction. Certainly not the intended orbit, but serviceable. In another failure for the planning division though, uh, we will see that in fact the payload is going in the opposite direction from Bean Station, resulting in yet another very costly correction burn uh, in order to correct that. In fact at this point it was it was borderline whether the payload would have enough fuel to rendezvous with Bean Station. Uh, in any case, it would take an extreme amount of time. Uh, here, the payload is approaching the moon and approaching its periapsis for its main retro burn into orbit. This will not get into a tight orbit, but instead a phasing orbit, of course. That to better rendezvous with Bean Station. The inaccuracy in its lunar transfer burn meant that the orbital burn was actually more costly than usual as well. So uh, it got bitten on both sides. Uh, here is the initial rendezvous burn to Bean Station. Uh, that was fairly light, but on encountering Bean Station, the burn to match Bean Station's velocity ended up being very onerous and, of course, uh, taking too much time. And so on this initial pass near Bean Station, the payload couldn't match speeds in time and had to re-rendezvous after that, taking extra time. And this is actually the second pass near Bean Station where it finally was able to kill its velocity and begin basic rendezvous procedures. So here it's burning towards Bean Station and after this it's uh, fairly simple. It had the required monopropellant, uh, spare monopropellant in fact, but you can see the oxidizer is quite short. 
and so it was really tight on fuel near the end whether it could actually meet up with Bean Station or not. Here is the docking of Bean Station and there's the bump and there we have it the new fuel module docked up with Bean Station and it has its load of liquid fuel so if the Ryan 1 Space Liner would like to refuel at this station this is now a possibility the entire station would be in line with the liner the liner would dock with its uh, tail to the senior docking port on the fuel payload and the rest of the station would basically be in line with the liner and so a very stable configuration altogether so with this view of the newly reconfigured bean station with the fuel module attached and the Kerbin dipping down below the horizon of the moon there I'll say thank you for watching this presentation of the EDB's missions uh, the first failed mission on the Taurus B launcher and a successful mission with the new ELS launcher. We hope you will join us for future missions. If you enjoyed this video, please do remember to press like. And if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And we'll see you next time.